Now, uh, in the last video, I said that we would come back to the polynomial model. And so that's what we're going to do now. Uh, I'm breaking this up into two parts. I want to show you how to obtain the models from the, uh, the, the scatter plots and how to make adjustments for the size, the degree of the polynomial we're working with. And then we'll return in another video to talk about sort of the more general properties of polynomial models and how to analyze them in uh, the data analysis tool pack. Uh, but in this case, what I've created is a set of monthly uh, electricity bills uh, these are other months of the year, so we can think of it as time. And then these are um, some example bills. Now, in order to sort of analyze whether what kind of model we're going to need, it's always a good idea to start out with a visualization and graph the data. And again, uh, we want a scatter plot. And to make sense of this month and monthly bill. Now, what this uh, data suggests is that this is definitely not linear. Um, I think the explanation would be that Winter is very cold, and so you're running the heat a lot, maybe some extra space heaters, things like that. Uh, in the springtime, the weather is nice outside, and so you don't need to run either the heat or the air conditioner particularly well. You can open the windows. In the summertime, you have to run the air conditioner because maybe the weather is too warm. And then in the fall, again, it gets comfortable, and then it's, when it starts getting cold again, then the um, the monthly bill then climbs again as you prepare for, you know, the bone chilling uh, winter weather. So this is a very complex behavior and uh, typically a quadratic model would have some kind of like a U-shaped graph. This has two U-shapes, so this is more complex than that, but uh, this is, this is, you know, basically what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to model this data. And the most complex models that Excel can produce are polynomial models. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to add our trend line, except it's not going to be a line. And we're going to select polynomial. Now, the polynomial model has other components to it besides just selecting the polynomial model. This order talks about the degree of the polynomial. So a quadratic model is the, um, the typical place where it starts. That's a, not, that's a model that contains x squared. So it contains a constant term, it contains a linear term, and it contains an x squared term potentially. Now, as you increase this order, the largest that Excel can do is degree six polynomials. But as you increase this, you get the opportunity for more complexity. So notice that this quadratic model right now, this degree two model, it's basically looking like a U-shaped graph. It doesn't really capture this double increase, double, deep, double dip. So let's try a cubic graph. This does a little bit better, but not. it's not really capturing this quite correctly. Um, cubics can typically have a single dip and a single peak but not a, a dip and then a peak and then another dip. Uh, and so let's go to a degree four model. This is looking a little bit better. Now, degree four models are already somewhat unusual. Um, it, degree four models can look like W-shaped graphs, which is why this is probably the best way for us to go with this particular graph. Um, but you can uh, go higher in Excel. Uh, the concern here is that we have only 12 observations. And so the higher the degree of polynomial you require, the more likely you are to have problems with overfitting. So fitting the noise and the data rather than sort of the actual behavior of the model. But we can go ahead and see a fifth degree polynomial actually did a slightly better job with this. 
um, six degree polynomial did not really do much difference. Now, if you have models that are going to be very similar in their output, you generally, because of principles of parsimony, you want to have the, um, uh, the lower degree term that fits the data. So let's look at um, the R squared values and the equations, and then let's go back through our examples. Um, try again. Yeah, didn't put the equation on the graph. There we go. Um, yeah, let's try and stick it down here because it's going to take up a lot of space and we get a lot of terms. Uh, okay. So this was our degree two model. And we can see the R squared value is 0.5. And as we, we noted from the, um, the graph initially, this doesn't seem like it makes a great fit. So as we increase the order, we should assess the fit of our model. The R squared value has gone up with the cubic model, but uh, as we noted, this still, this W shape um, typically requires sort of a fourth degree polynomial or higher. Um, this is doing better, but it's still not maybe as good as it could be. We go up to degree four, that's a 0.8. So that's bet, again, in an improvement. We saw with degree five, we had a much better fit to our model. We've now gone up to 0.96. Now, when we go to degree six, which is the highest Excel will allow us to do, we do get a slightly better improvement, but it's at the cost of another term. And so typically um, in statistics, we want the best model that we can get with the smallest possible number of terms. Um, because that helps us avoid that overfitting problem. And so in this particular case, I would argue that that 1% increase in explainability is not really worth that extra term. This is already a pretty complex model. Uh, when we went down to degree four to degree five, we gained 15% of our explainability. Whereas when we went from five to six, we only gained 1% according to the R squared value. So we don't wanna go any higher than degree five in this case. And again, this is pretty unusual, the fact that you need a model that's this complex. Um, as we'll talk about later, typically we want to uh, you know, keep it to X squared or X cubed typically. Uh, we really only wanna go higher than that if we have pretty good reason to do so. Now, if we had more data for more years in terms of the electric bill, then we would be able to better assess whether this was justified or not. But that, that, that again, that principle of parsimony, um, there is a calculation that we can do using the data analysis tool pack, which we'll do in a later video, that uh, has an, a, what's called an adjusted R squared value that can sort of help us understand how much that extra term is costing us in terms of the explanatory power, sort of trade off that, you know, is it doing us really any good? Um, did the, if the adjusted R squared doesn't go up from one time to the next, that's a sign that it's not helping us. And so that six, that improvement for like 1%, is going to be reflected in that multiple R squared value. Now, there is no, again, there is, I've noted before, there is no correlation that we can, linear correlation that we can calculate for this. Uh, and the sort of closest approximation in the linear world to our multiple uh, term polynomial model is a multiple regression model, which we will also come back and look at in another example. But Without having all of that machinery, you can obtain a polynomial up to degree six model um, using just the graph in Excel.